Good afternoon. Welcome to this meeting of the Committee on Governmental Operations. I'm proud to be uh, joined by uh, Council Member Mark Levine, Council Member Joe Borelli, Council Member Carlos Menchaca, and Carlos and uh, Council Member uh, Antonio Reynoso. Uh, two of the colleagues need to uh, get to another hearing or meeting, so I'll ask uh, Committee Clerk uh, William Martin to please call the roll for Menchaca and Reynoso. Council Member Menchaca. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Reynoso. I vote aye on all. Thank you. On May 23rd, 2017, the Committee on Governmental Operations uh, held a, sorry, on today the uh, Committee on Governmental Operations uh, is holding a second hearing on 10 bills relating to uh, the uh, Board of Standards of Appeals, uh, and they include a whole number of bills, which I will now get into. Uh, one of the bills is not related to BSA, it relates to sending voter registration, uh, sorry, voter history information to residents of the city in an effort to get them to vote more. Uh, this is something that I particularly support, given that I probably still own the domain name voterhistory.org, where I had hoped to uh, use that information on a voluntary site for folks, but uh, got elected instead of launching that site. Uh, so of the nine bills we are voting on for the Board of Standards and Appeals today, the first of which is introduction number uh, 282. That legislation was initially sponsored by Jimmy Van Bramer, and this is a bill that he introduced in the previous council session that we're proud to be uh, hearing and passing today. It would require the Board of Standards and Appeals to refer to relevant arguments and evidence submitted to them in rendering a final determination. It was amended to permit similar comments to, to be categorized together for such response. It will take 90 days, take effect 90 days after becoming law. Uh, technical amendments were also made. Proposed introduction number 418A by Council Member Kosowitz, which she has been uh, introducing for, for several sessions now, would require the Board of Standards and Appeals to provide a response when it makes a determination contrary to the recommendations of a community or borough board. It was amended to clarify that inadvertent failure to comply should not in an invalidate a decision of the Board of Standards and Appeals. It would take effect 180 days after becoming law, and technical amendments were also made. Introduction 514A, uh, introduced by uh, Council Member Matteo, who used to be a member of the Committee on Governmental Operations. However, we replaced him with a uh, younger Republican from Staten Island, and uh, we're grateful to have him. Uh, and so proposed introduction number 514A would require the Board of Standards and Appeals to provide a notification to the owner of record when a variance is about to expire. <laughs> Use of such property after the expiration of such term may be a violation of the certificate of occupancy, and such notice would inform the owner that the Board of Standards and Appeals may not approve an application to extend the term of the variance until any penalties for such violation are paid. Since the first hearing, the provision related to potential penalties was amended. The universe of term variations Variances covered by the notification requirement was amended to begin with variances issued after December 31st, 2013. It would take effect 90 days after becoming law. Technical amendments were also made. Proposed introduction number 1200A, because we've done that many bills in this session, uh, <laughs> uh, by Council Member uh, Richards, who also chairs the Zoning Committee, has been amended since first hearing so that it would now require that certain copies of an application or application material that are required to be mailed to the council member, borough president, community board, or city agency are sent by applicants using a method that provides proof of service and that such proof be provided to the Board of Standards and Appeals. The board would note on its website when such proof of service of delivery has been received and verified. It was amended to take effect 180 days. Uh, after becoming law, and just I'll take a moment here to just pause and explain why these are all useful. Uh, with regards to the first item uh, by Van Bramer, a lot of folks found that BSA didn't seem to be taking into account evidence and in their decisions did not include findings of fact relating to the items that people were discussing. Uh, with regards to introduction 14A by Councilmember Kosowitz, uh, we found that there really weren't strong decisions from the BSA. They were very short, sometimes less than 100 words long, and we wanted to make sure that they had to have specific responses to any concerns raised by the community. Uh, and with regards to uh, introduction uh, uh, 
A, uh, on Staten Island, where Councilmember Matteo represents, there were a lot of people who had variances that had expired. And with regards to introduction 1200, there were a number of situations where council members and others weren't actually getting notices about BSA applications that were coming before uh, them and uh, the, their community boards and others. And in so doing, some folks, uh, by, by requiring the applicant to provide this information, we feel that it'll put people on notice. Propose introduction number 1390 and uh, on are bills that I was proud to uh, work on with the uh, land use as well as legislative division. I want to thank our committee counsel, uh, Brad Reed, for all the work he's put into these bills for a very long time. They're inspired by uh, reports done by the Municipal Arts Society in 1976 and uh, 2004, and uh, it only took uh, 40 years to get these uh, reforms implemented. We've now been joined by uh, Council Member David Greenfield. Proposed introduction number 1200 has been amended since first hearing, so it would now require that certain, co already read that one. Proposed introduction number 1390 would require that the Department of City Planning to publicly post the name and contact information of the employee acting as a coordinator with the Board of Standards and Appeals. The department would also be required to post a record of each application for a variance or a special permit to the Board of Standards of Appeal for which the department provided testimony as well as a copy of such testimony. The bill was amended to require that the website of the Board of Standards of Appeals linked to such testimony it would take effect immediately. Technical amendments were also made. Uh, the BSA process involves an applicant often without any other party on the other side. Technically, that party is the Department of City Planning, which is vested with protecting our zoning code from the variances that the BSA seeks to grant. And so uh, the Department of City Planning had a person whose responsibility this was. Since then, that person has retired. Uh, this legislation would require them to designate a new person and then allow us to keep track on uh, where they're representing the city and protecting the zoning from variances. Introduction 1391A would require the Board of Standards and Appeals to have access to the advice of a state certified general real estate appraiser with no less than five years experience in analyzing and auditing real estate investments. It's been amended since introduction to provide that the access to such expertise may be attained through a contract with a third party or engaging the service of an appraiser already under contract with another agency. It was also amended to require that such appraiser have at least five years of experience analyzing and auditing real estate investments. It was amended to take effect 120 days after becoming law. Technical amendments were also made. Let the world be on notice that if you're out there and you are a uh, general real estate appraiser, please begin applying for those jobs. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the uh, BSA had that expertise so that they could analyze the financials. One of the grounds and one of the variances, one of the five findings of fact necessary is often uh, that there is a uh, financial uh, hardship and so we need to make sure that when somebody is uh, saying that they have a financial hardship that we have expertise to determine so. Uh, we also have Introduction 1392A, this legislation does quite a lot. Uh, it would require certain standards for applications to the Board of Standards as appeal, as well as for application process and would establish a civil penalty for false statements made to the Board. The bill would require certain materials to be included with certain applications, including a notarized certification that the statements in the materials are correct, a neighborhood character study if a claim of uniqueness of physical conditions is being made, and a financial analysis by a qualified real estate professional. Such fi financial analysis would, be, would contain market-based acquisition costs. Any appraisal of the property provided by the applicant as part of an applicant to a government entity within the five years prior hard and soft costs, and proofs of attempts to obtain financing where relevant. The bill has been amended to require that any minimum required materials beyond those above should be established by rule, provided that additional materials could be required from individual applicant in the discretion of the board. The bill would also amend to require that any materials presented by an applicant to a community board or borough board for a public hearing by those entities on the on the applicant must also be supplied by the applicant to the Board of Standards and Appeals. Such entities may submit a copy of any such testimony or materials to the board as well. The bill would also require testimony delivered by an applicant at public hearings held by the board on the application shall be sworn or affirmed under oath. The bill was amended to require the board to report to the Department of Investigation any information concerning a written instrument that contains a false statement that was presented to the board with knowledge or belief that such instrument would be part of the record of the board. And finally, the false statement Civil penalty section of the board bill was amended since the prior hearing to require civil penalty should only be applied to a false statement made or, allow or allowed knowingly 
rather than negligently for uh, the legal scholars in the room, like my uh, good friend to my uh, right, uh, it is a much higher standard. Uh, it was also meant to provide that the Corporation Council or an agency designated by the mayor would have the authority to enforce the provision, but that the Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings would adjudicate any such violation. Additionally, it was amended to require that any person who notifies the board of such violation prior to receiving notice of the potential violation shall not be subject to such civil penalty. Further, the maximum amount of civil penalty was reduced from $25,000 to $15,000. And just to clarify, proposed introduction 1392A is not intended to require that applicants certify that the content of materials provided by their consultants are correct. Rather, the intent is to require that every person submitting application materials be held accountable for the accuracy of their statements, reports, and the work product submitted in support of an applicant. The bill does hold applicants accountable for the submission of materials prepared by others that applicants know are incorrect. This was amended to take effect 12 months after becoming law. Technical amendments were also made. Proposed introduction 1393A would require the Board of Standards Appeal to report information about applications for variances and special permits and appeals of decisions regarding variances and special permits to the Council twice per year. It was amended since the prior hearing to include reporting on pre-application meetings. It would also take effect immediately. Technical amendments were also made. Introduction 1394A uh, would require the Board of Standards Appeal to compile data on the location of variances and special permit applications into a data set. Since the last hearing, it's been amended to provide that such data set may be mapped as a layer on an existing interactive map, and such data shall include variances and special permits applications beginning on January 1st, 1998, uh, when I graduated high school, uh, 1998. It was amended to... Well, no, 1998 was when I graduated high school. It was amended to take effect 12 months after becoming law. Technical amendments were also made. This is also one of the recommendations from the Municipal Arts Society, and this would allow us to see on a map where the BSA is uh, rezoning uh, under the law. Uh, and then on a non-BSA bill, we have introduction uh, 848A, which would require a voter history be mailed to each registered voter, but has been amended since its last hearing includes such voter history with voter guide prepared by the Campaign Finance Board has been further amended to provide the CFP flexibility in how such voter history is provided with such voter guide, uh, and it was amended to take effect on January 1st, 2018, but I severely hope that the CFB does it for this election. Uh, seeing no one here to testify, uh, So uh, if, if you care to, if you feel, please feel free to e email your testimony to uh, policy at bencalos.com uh, and we will uh, add it. Uh, do we have any comments from any of the uh, members? Uh, I now ask the committee clerk to uh, call the roll. Lee Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on gov op governmental operations. All items are coupled. Chair Kalos. Yes, on all. Greenfield. Mr. Chair, may I explain my vote, please? Chair, may I explain my vote, please? <laughs> Your Eminence, may I explain my vote, please? David, I appreciate the uh, gender neutral use of chair. Thank you. Please do. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, I very much appreciate your leadership in this particular area. As uh, you know, the BSA plays a significant role in the land use process by acting as the constitutionally necessary safety valve to grant relief from the city's zoning code. The ability of property owners to apply for this relief reduces the risk of claims of takings of private property and ensure that our zoning resolution is upheld. And as such, the board is instrumental in shaping our neighborhood processes by granting special permits and variances outside of the ULA process. And as land use chair, I believe that the BSA needs to be more accountable and much more responsive to community concerns in order to bring more transparency and predictability to the application process. And I think that overwhelmingly this package will do just that. So uh, by and large, I'm in favor of this. However, I will abstain from one piece of legislation, which is intro 1392A. I support what it's trying to accomplish, specifically ensuring accuracy in BSA applications, holding practitioners accountable, enhancing predictability in the BSA process, and I congratulate you, Chair, on your legislation. However, I have received letters from the New York City Bar Association's Committee on Land Use, Planning, and Zoning, the American Council of Engineering Companies of New York, as well as land use law practitioners who routinely come before the BSA, and they have raised concerns regarding that potentially this bill might hamper the BSA's 
flexibility and the ability on especially small property owners, schools, religious and not-for-profit institutions who are seeking relief from the BSA. Without getting into all the details, I look forward to having the opportunity to chat with you about that offline and to see uh, whether it is still possible to make some more tweaks and certainly the tweak that you made, the knowingly tweak, is a very significant one and absolutely as a uh, adjunct professor of law who teaches this exact subject, I appreciate that and I think it's significant. However, I do uh, want to reserve my vote because of those specific concerns that were raised by the Bar Association and the American Council of Engineers. And I do, however, want to note that this is a significant achievement. This is the first major reform of the Board of Standards and Appeals uh, literally in decades. And uh, the world of land use and BSA and variances and special permits have gotten a lot more complicated when the first zoning text came out. It was a handful of pages. It is now some 3,000 pages. And so uh, obviously a lot to work with over there, and I look forward to working with you on this, and I congratulate you, Chair, on a very significant accomplishment. Thank you. Councilmember Levine. I can't compete with either the Chair's statement or that one, so I'm going to simply vote aye on all. Thank you. Borelli. Aye on all. By a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted with the exception of introduction number 1392A, which is adopted by a vote of five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention. Thank you. Hereby conclude this uh, hearing of the Committee on Governmental Operations.